Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 to 14, New King James Version. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb, according to the house of his father, a lamb for the household. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male, of the first year, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw, nor boiled with at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it, with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. So you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover." For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. And also reading 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26, New King James Version. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This is the living word of God. Thanks be to God. I'm really glad you came. Let's go somewhere else and talk. Elohim, God of our forefathers, bless these waters that pour forth. Bless the hands that enter them in whatever work they do, and especially into thy service. Bless the skin that these waters touch. Let this water wash away all iniquity 
and ease the discomfort of human actions. Let your servant's hope be restored by these waters. Let your follower's spirit be nourished by your teaching. Let us remember your son who became servant, washing the feet of his disciples. Let us remember your greatness, not only in power, but in honor and sacrifice. By all that you are, O God, and by the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, let this action and all actions we do this day reveal your glory and nothing more. Amen. Hey, I'm really glad to see you. How's your week been going? Well, that's really great. That's awesome. You know, when Jesus came into town here, uh, the celebrating went up in the streets when he entered Jerusalem. I thought it was too good to be true. But uh, here we are almost a week later, and uh, this feels like it's really it, you know. This feels like it could be the moment in our time. But we've walked so long in darkness, and we've had so many bumps in the road. I mean, every time we go with Jesus into town and the Pharisees would get there and they'd start to discredit him and tell us he was speaking heresy and lies. I mean, I remember back at Simon's house, I was really worried back there. But, you know, it's funny. Actually, it's funny. Jesus was just talking about this new thing at dinner tonight. He stood up. He calmed us all down. We were talking about all sorts of things like where we're going to bring the Son of God next and what message we're going to take to people. Anyway, Jesus stood up and uh, he told us, this to do this new thing he broke a loaf of bread he gave thanks to God for it and then he said take this bread eat it this is my body which is broken for you we're all a little hesitant at first but Peter kind of took the first step took that first piece and uh, we all kind of followed suit after it was really cool and uh, Jesus took his cup he raised it after giving thanks again and said this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. It felt like Jesus was telling us to do this bread and cup thing so that we would remember him. But, you know, when will there be a time where we won't remember Jesus? You know, like, it was kind of weird. It's like Jesus is saying that he might not be here one day. And, uh, yeah, it's just really hard to picture that. Anyway, this was funny uh, because uh, just before Jesus did this, I was talking to Thomas about the Passover. And you remember that story, right? The families of Israel get a male lamb without blemish. and that, That's under a year old, of course. There's all those rules around it. They get that under a year old, no blemish on that lamb, and they kill it. And they put some blood on their doorposts so that the avenger of God would not enter their houses to take away the firstborn. That was way, way, way back. In, uh, when, in Egypt, when Moses was around and God was trying to get Pharaoh to let the children of Israel out of their slave bonds. Anyway, Thomas and I were talking about how that probably was super weird uh, way back when Moses explained it. And here Jesus comes and tells us to do this weird thing. And I started to wonder if the two things might actually be related somehow. Thomas was pretty doubtful, though. You know, he's a real skeptic at times, that Thomas probably would doubt Jesus if he was right in front of him, uh, if Jesus didn't prove it was him. Anyway, what do you think? Is there some connection between the Passover and this new thing that Jesus has said we should do when we get together? Oh, it looks like everyone is done celebrating for the night and everyone's heading home. I think we're going by way of Gethsemane tonight. Hey, it was really great to catch up with you. This has been one awesome Holy Week, if you ask me. Jesus is just so awesome, and it feels like we're finally making a huge difference in the world. Can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. Good night.